I always play Mexican music. He, I don't know, you know, somehow Gustavo on the radio, he heard the classical music that I, I never, we never played classical music, but he discovered it on the radio. Right there by the record player, you know, he just loves to see the way the records will come down and, and listening, listening to the music. But that was Mexican music, not classical music. <laughs> but the thing was that he's the one who was, was always asking. Mommy, I want to go to the music store. I need a piano. Mommy, I want a, I want a piano. Little by little, yeah, we went along with whatever he wanted. You know, because time goes by, things happen, and that's the way it is. Every competition was first prize. And then he, uh, she sent them to North Carolina, first prize. Another, you know, to New York to enter another competition. And he was, I mean, that's the way Gustavo was always. Because, you know, my husband was a waiter and I was a, working on a linen supply. We could have never sent Gustavo to New York to study, you know, the way he did. And from then on, everything was just right. Going to Europe, to, for our international competition. Can you imagine, you know, uh, 32 countries, countries, you know, I mean, they send the best student from the country to compete. And he won first prize, the Clara Hasco competition in, in Switzerland. That's, I think that were, I was very surprised. so young and I I used to carry a portable 45 player and had I wanted that as an option everywhere I went and just the idea that this circular thing in a phonograph could create this wonderful world of sound and the immediacy of that, the, the experience of suddenly you're in a, in a different realm of, of just losing yourself in the delights of the sound. That was something literally bewitching for me. The sheer sound of music, just being able to hear music was already something very special. By now, I know I'm a person who really gets into something when I get crazy about it. And so, as a child, 
it was something very powerful. That it was the only thing that really put me on fire. So I did things, I tried lots of things, but nothing ever had the intensity and the wonderful feelings that I got from spending time with music. The minute I be, was playing the piano, that I thought was the best experience of my life, being able to, I could just lose myself for, for hours. Having that discovery, I think, was the most special thing because I literally just spent as much time as possible exploring it. introduction to play in New York with the orchestra, see the city, and meet my teacher Herbert Stetson. And seeing the city and being there, I just knew that's where I wanted to be. So once I was there, I was very fortunate that Herbert Stetson was just what I needed. He was a wonderful man because not only was he a very good teacher, but he took an interest in you as a human being. And that's very important. He knew that I was coming from California and I was on my own. And so really was very, I think, sensitive to what I needed in terms of technical, musical development and all types of guidance. So I was very happy to be with somebody that I didn't feel that I was intimidated by and that I enjoyed going to my lessons very much. That's very important. And then great musicians like Felix Gallimir, I think was one of the most important influences at that school in my musical development. Just being with him, just going into the room and seeing him 
and being around him was just as powerful and influential an experience as all the years that I spent studying with Herbert Stetson. He had that type of charm, that type of musical intensity, and that when you were having a lesson with him and you saw how important it was for him to make a suggestion and why he suggested something that was just as important as the weekly lesson that I had with my piano teacher, who I knew at Juilliard for 10 years. Well, you know, for me, to be a pianist, merely to say I'm a pianist is not good enough, because to be an artist, to be, of course, even before an artist, a musician is very important. And Gustavo is all three. He is what the ideal pianist today must be, an eclectic who looks deeply into the repertoire. You say Beethoven sonatas and he's done them all. You say Mozart sonatas, he's played those in cycles. You say, oh, I'll bet you don't know the Schumann symphonic etudes. And he said, well, of course I do. And he goes and he plays those for you. So when you put all of this together, you are talking about not just a pianistic entity, but a man who is an artist. And that is one of the chief characteristics uh, that when I listen to him, I feel the undergrowth of culture. He sees music as a rite of the spiritual world. And most of all, he knows that art is worthwhile. You have to be an artist of the piano. It's far beyond just playing an instrument. anybody who enjoys doing something and they have a talent for it the best part of it is being able to lose yourself in it and not have a sense of where you are and the passing of time that's the most one of the most beautiful experiences in life to have that experience timelessness experience this feeling of losing That, I think, is the most beautiful feeling to lose yourself in something completely and lose a sense of time and place.
background is Russian in terms of this piano schooling. And the basis, I think, or one of the most important things of Russian school of piano playing is sound as the first element, beauty of sound. You first must play the instrument with the best and most beautiful sound possible and how to find the best way to play and make a beautiful sound. I think what I like the most about the piano is that it's a unique channel for me to lose myself into a sound world that I think then allows me to experience my better self. The piano takes me to a very special place always. And I like to think that the piano takes me to a place where I experience the better part of my inner world. I suppose when we dream, we, we go to these realms, places that we don't really go to during the day because we're so distracted and we have so many things that we have to do. So the realms where you go in your dreams, I think are related to where you go when you lose yourself in something that you love so much. So I like that this sound that I get from the piano when I have the pleasure of playing it that somehow that opens the door for me to go somewhere where I can then really somehow feel something I never feel anywhere else.
I always sight read very well. And it can be almost something dangerous because you always want something new. So it was very simple. I'd learn something and learn it quickly. And it was necessary for me to play it in class or to play it in a concert. And then I'd just jump on to something else. So I just learned a lot of music in a very short amount of time. I already knew what music I wanted to play, what concertos I wanted to learn. You know, I would get suggestions, but it was natural. Once you played a Beethoven sonata, you'd want to play a more difficult one and something from a later period, since it was so different from the well-known ones from his middle period, and, and dabble in everything else, 20th century music and the big romantic concertos and even early music. It was wonderful to, to discover Scarlatti sonatas and to also have the challenge of playing Bach fugues, knowing that that was something very special compared to image of Debussy, two just completely different worlds. So it, it was just great to be able to have this constant discovery and constant uh, search for the next obsession. Just as an athlete stays in shape, as a pianist you have to stay in shape as well. So it's, it's fun to get to know the two, because I go to the gym as well. So it's fun to know how you can be a, like an athlete and have certain things that you have to do pianistically, 
regularly to stay pianistically ready to play something that's demanding. For example, when you play very demanding repertoire by Rachmaninoff or Liszt or even Beethoven sonatas, you need to use your hands differently than it is to play Bach fugues and Mozart sonatas. So if you're only playing Mozart sonatas for a long time, your hands are not in the right shape to play the Rachmaninoff Third Piano Concerto. So it's just like an athlete who needs to be doing certain things if he wants to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. If you really want to take something to a very high level, especially something that involves just you and it, whether you're a tennis player, a painter, or a cook, or a pianist, you have to love it so much that it just seems incidental that you're going to spend lots of time experimenting and figuring out everything you can about your relationship to that. So yes, it's just forget it if you don't have this first element. It takes care of so much. That's what's the most important. Practicing doesn't become a chore. So I think that's much more important how do, how do we quantify that next to talent? You can have, yes, you see, you can have tons of talent. But if you don't love it more than anything else, forget it. Yes, so the sheer love and passion, the desire has to be there. It must be paramount because doesn't matter if you're gifted for it. That takes care of everything.
there's only so much a composer can write down. And the artist's imagination can bring so much to a composer's intentions. What a beautiful thing to have these two things come together. Not just the composer writing things down, follow what I've written down. How about a collaboration? How about a composer with very good intentions writing as much down as possible to give us an idea of what he really wants and also an artist with enough imagination to take that to another level that the composer says, you know, that has never occurred to me and yet I'm enjoying what you are bringing to my initial offering. So I like thinking that the two together, not just, not just a, a roadmap, but the possibility that it says turn left and then turn right, that you might find something along the way that gets you to the same destination. You as an Im imaginative artist can get to this same goal, this end result, the same destination through a, a road that hasn't been, that's not on the GPS. and Beethoven are just so great that we'll never have anything like it now. And it's so great and powerful that it will live and have so much enduring richness, no matter what, as time goes on, the greatest music will have that quality, just like great literature, great things, great people will have an enduring legacy, an enduring quality that is impossible to destroy or impossible to ignore. It just, anybody who's aware of what there is available that's in this realm, whether it's 
a Bach fugue or a Shakespeare play or a beautiful, great work of art, it, you know that in your lifetime, that will always be there as something above everything else. It's wonderful to be in a place that's very stimulating, visually and sonically. It doesn't have to always be noise, because there can be lots of interesting things uh, ex to experience in a big city. Seeing such amazing buildings and so many people and so many sounds to take in, it all kind of comes together as a total gestalt. The total gestalt of New York is dazzling. Nothing like it. <laughs> but then, when you go to a wonderful place that has a purity of peace and quiet, and then you begin to hear yourself your inner world, your thoughts. It's a wonderful experience to be able to have peace and to listen to your inner thoughts and to yourself and all the things that come when you're in a good space and in a place where you can really calm down and listen. So, I think it's very important for everybody to find that place where they can be at peace with themselves and listen to themselves. Because there's a lot going on and there's a lot that our inner world wants to say, 
but so much gets in the way, including ourselves. So very important, I think, to find, find a means to staying in touch with that. I always encourage anybody to have music in their lives, even if they, however modest it may be, because it's one of the few things I think that we have that really gives you better sense of what the best part of life is. Music gives you something that nothing else gives you it doesn't matter if you're studying music or music is your profession or you're just having a wonderful experience listening to it they all take you somewhere that is I think unique and very special I think it's probably unhealthy to not have music in your life. I think daydreaming is part of a lot of creative people's lives. Um, 
I think artists are very in touch with visualization and imagining yourself in other circumstances than the moment. So I think daydreaming is very important and being in touch with that and what it says to you and your ability to imagine and see and think of other things besides what's happening now. Very important, I think, to be able to travel into your into the world of your imagination. So dreams at night and dreams during the day, your imagination, very important, I think.